right, everybody, get ready, because today we're diving into a real brain bender, Boltzmann brains. We're tackling this one because you're super into, like, the nature of reality, the mysteries of the cosmos, that whole deal. And Sean Carroll's paper, Why Boltzmann Brains Are Bad, well, it takes us right to the edge of, you know, what we think we know about it all. We're talking about the wild idea that maybe, just maybe, our brains... Everything we are, it's just a random blip and get this, the cosmic microwave background. It's a mind-blowing concept, right? Oh. And it all starts with this idea of entropy. Basically, things tend to go from order to disorder over time. Yeah, like think about a sandcastle on the beach, perfectly sculpted. Eventually what happens? Waves crash, wind blows, and boom, it crumbles. Just a matter of time. Exactly. But here's where it gets really interesting. Boltzmann's work showed us that Entropy, this tendency towards disorder, it's not some kind of unbreakable law. It's more like a game of probability, but on a cosmic scale, you know. So in a universe as mind-bogglingly huge and old as ours. There's this tiny, tiny chance that particles could just randomly bump into each other and form something unexpected. And I don't mean just any random arrangement of particles, but something complex, something like a brain. Imagine your brain with all your memories, your entire sense of self just popping out of the void. That, my friends, is the basic idea of a Boltzmann brain. And it's not just brains either. We could be talking planets, stars, even entire galaxies spontaneously coming into being. Right. Like the universe has had billions of years, plenty of time to roll the dice. And in theory, any combination is possible. Exactly. That's yeah. a pretty wild thought, right? Absolutely wild. And Carol points out that this kind of spontaneous formation, this would be a Boltzmann fluctuation. It's a specific type of quantum fluctuation that actually goes against the grain, so to speak. It decreases entropy. Like, imagine that sandcastle on the beach suddenly reassembling itself. That's the kind of mind-bending event we're talking about here. And what's even more interesting is that these Boltzmann fluctuations wouldn't just be these fleeting blips. So if a Boltzmann brain, or even a Boltzmann planet, were to just pop into existence... It wouldn't instantly disappear. It would stick around, potentially for a really long time, following the same laws of physics as everything else. So you're saying we could have these little pockets of complexity, these islands of order, just popping up out of the chaos of a high entropy universe. It's a possibility, at least theoretically. That's both fascinating and a little terrifying, I have to say. But this is where Sean Carroll's paper comes in, right? He doesn't seem too thrilled about the idea of a universe filled with these Boltzmann oddities. Yeah, he dives into some of the problems with Boltzmann brains. And one of his arguments focuses on, well, the expected fate of our universe. Okay, so how does that play into it? Well, the current thinking is that we're heading towards a state called de sitter space. It's like this stretched out, low energy, kind of cosmic waiting room. Okay, I'm trying to picture that. Go on. And this de sitter state, at least according to some interpretations of quantum field theory, it shouldn't have these Boltzmann fluctuations because it's what physicists call stationary. Meaning? Meaning unchanging in time. Okay. So... If our universe is evolving towards this state where Boltzmann fluctuations aren't even possible, wouldn't that mean we're safe? No risk of suddenly waking up as a disembodied brain floating in an empty void. Well, not so fast. It's not quite that simple. While Carroll uses this argument to suggest that Boltzmann brains are pretty unlikely in our universe, it's definitely sparked a lot of debate in the physics community. Really? Oh, yeah. You've got other physicists, like Seth Lloyd, for instance, He's argued that you could still have these fluctuations, even in a stationary state. So how do they explain that? How can you have something fluctuating in a universe that's essentially static? It comes down to a really fundamental question. What does it even mean for something to happen in a quantum system? Especially in a system where our usual understanding of time might not fully apply. Okay, I gotta admit, this is where my brain starts to hurt a little. So we've got this debate about whether our universe, as it evolves, would even allow for Boltzmann brains in the first place. What else should we be considering here? Well, even if we, just for a moment, say, okay, Boltzmann brains are possible, we're still left with this puzzle. We look around, and the universe seems suspiciously lacking in, you know, disembodied consciousnesses. Yeah, good point. That's where things get really interesting with the work of physicists like Dyson, Clavin, and Susskind. We're back, and we're still neck deep in the bizarre world of Boltzmann brains. We've talked about whether they're even possible, but now I'm curious, why are physicists like Sean Carroll so worried about them? It's not like, you know, they're going to band together and start causing trouble in the universe. Right. It's not a Boltzmann brain invasion or anything. So what makes them so bad for our understanding of 
well, everything. It all comes down to what their existence would mean for the very foundation of, like how we learn, how we make sense of the world. Carol uses this term, cognitive instability, to describe the problem. Cognitive instability. Okay, now you're speaking my language. It sounds a little ominous, to be honest. Mm, think of it this way. Imagine you built a house on a foundation of sand. Uh-oh. Yeah, it might look okay at first glance, but one good storm and the whole thing collapses. That's what a universe dominated by Boltzmann brains is like, at least from a scientific point of view. Right, because if our brains, the very tools we use to observe and understand the universe, if those are just random flukes, then how can we trust any of our conclusions about reality? So you're saying all those intricate equations describing gravity, all the data from those incredible telescopes peering back to almost the beginning of time, all of that could just be the random firings of a brain that, like, assembled itself five minutes ago. It's a mind-bending thought experiment, right? That our understanding of a 13.8 billion-year-old universe, all that carefully collected evidence could be completely wrong because our brains are just cosmic accidents. That's the unsettling implication. If Boltzmann brains were common, it's like we'd have no real reason to believe in this long-ordered history of the universe. And without that history, without this foundation of cause and effect... Our entire scientific worldview starts to crumble. It becomes, well unreliable. This is really blowing my mind. It's like someone just pulled the rug out from under our entire understanding of reality. So is there any way out of this conundrum? What are we supposed to do with this? Some physicists argue that just the fact that this Boltzmann brain hypothesis leads to such deep, you know, cognitive instability, that in itself is a reason to be skeptical of it. So are we saying that just by considering the possibility of Boltzmann brains, we're somehow making them less likely? It's a strange loop, isn't it? It's like a cosmic game of philosophical limbo. How low can our certainty go? In a way, yes. Because if our most basic assumptions about reality break down in a Boltzmann brain-dominated universe, maybe it's a sign that we need to go back and re-examine the assumptions themselves. Or consider some alternative cosmological models, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, so where do we go from here? If we're not ready to just accept that we might be living in a universe where our brains are just figments of random fluctuations, what are the alternatives? So we've really gone deep down this Boltzmann brain rabbit hole, right? Now we have. Explored this unsettling idea of cognitive instability. Questioned, like, the whole foundation of how we understand the universe. It's a lot to process. It really is. So where do we go from here? If we're not ready to accept this universe where our brains are just, you know, cosmic accidents, what are the alternatives? Well, one path is to consider that maybe, just maybe, our current cosmological models, the ones that seem to point towards this Boltzmann brain scenario, they might be missing something important. So maybe those models that suggest we're headed for a universe dominated by Boltzmann brains, maybe they're not telling the whole story. Exactly. Remember how we were talking about the de Sitter state? The one our universe seems to be moving toward? Right, right, like that cosmic dead end for Boltzmann brains. Carol argues it shouldn't have these Boltzmann fluctuations because it's unchanging in time. Okay, yeah. But what if that's not the whole picture? What are you thinking? What if there's a deeper level of physics, something beyond what we currently understand, that prevents these fluctuations from even happening? A kind of cosmic safety net, ensuring our reality isn't overrun by all these randomly generated consciousnesses. But a possibility, right? Or maybe the answer lies in this idea of the multiverse. Oh, okay. We've touched on this idea of bubble universes before. These pockets of reality with like, different physical laws, different constants. Right. And in this scenario, even if you have Boltzmann brains popping up in some of these bubble universes, they'd be confined to those specific regions. So our own bubble, with its seemingly stable laws of physics, its long history, it might be just one of countless others. Exactly. Okay. I can wrap my head around that. It's a much more reassuring thought, I have to say. Makes our existence feel a little less accidental, less arbitrary. But let's be real. If we're talking about a multiverse, are we just replacing one mind-boggling concept with another? It's true. It's not exactly a simple solution. How could we ever prove or disprove something that exists, you know, beyond our observable universe? It's a huge challenge. But that being said, the search for evidence of a multiverse is a very active area of research in cosmology. Really? So what are scientists looking at? Well, some believe we might find clues in the patterns of the cosmic microwave background radiation. The afterglow of the Big Bang. Exactly. We could potentially glimpse these other universes, or at least echoes of them, by studying the oldest light in our own universe. That's the idea. And 
Others are looking for signs of collisions between these bubble universes. Collisions? Like universes crashing into each other. It's a wild thought, right? That's pretty intense. These collisions could leave behind these signatures, these telltale signs in how galaxies are distributed, or even these really subtle ripples in space-time itself. It's incredible to think that we might actually one day have evidence for something as mind-bending as the multiverse. But even if we never fully solve this whole Boltzmann brain problem, Yikes. isn't there something inherently amazing about even asking these kinds of questions? Absolutely. The very act of confronting these big existential questions, mm -hmm. pushing the limits of what we know, it's a testament to human curiosity. I love that. Our drive to make sense of this universe, to figure out our place in it all. And it's a good reminder that for all of our scientific achievements, we're still just scratching the surface. Definitely. We exist in this vast and mysterious cosmos, and it's filled with possibilities that we're only just beginning to grasp. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of our deep dive into the world of Boltzmann brains, cognitive instability, and the absolutely mind-boggling concept of the multiverse. We may not have all the answers, but hopefully this journey has left you with a sense of wonder, a thirst for exploring these big questions, no matter how strange or unsettling they might seem. So until next time, keep those brains buzzing, and we'll catch you on our next deep dive.